hello and welcome to my channel I am glad that you decided to watch this video today this is a crazy meal, meal prep day I think I cooked for at least 12 hours straight very exhausting but I needed to get food done and ready for the week for the family plus some freezer meals for a little later or freezer snacks maybe um, so come along on this crazy cooking journey and watch what I made. So every week for my meal prep, one thing I always like to do is make hard boiled eggs. Sometimes we just eat the eggs, sometimes we put them in soup, sometimes I turn them into deviled eggs, which, which everybody loves. So today, I am just making my hard boiled eggs in my pressure cooker and they are amazing. Look how easy they are to peel. I love it. I used my Instapot to make these hard boiled eggs using the 555 method. I find it works the best. Five minutes to pressure cook, five minutes resting time, and five minutes in an ice bath. Another thing that we like to do is make breakfast burritos and freeze them. So this is my, my second time maybe doing this. I use the carb balanced tortillas because I have diabetes. So I try to eat a low carb diet. Keto is hard in a family where I'm the only one that has special dietary needs. So um, low carb is usually the best I can do. <laughs> um, so I'm just taking sausage that I already made, um, Bob Evans breakfast sausage, crumbled up. Everything has already been cooked and cooled. Um, I made scrambled eggs and then I'm just topping it with cheese and spinach and I think that's it. Um, and then we'll wrap them in foil, label them, and they will be placed in the freezer and eaten anytime anyone has a hankering for a breakfast burrito. I also had previously made and froze a one pound container of salsa and I didn't get to thaw it out yet. So the next time I get out a burrito for breakfast, I'm gonna thaw that out and see how the consistency of frozen salsa turned out. Um, just finishing up the breakfast burritos, um, using all up all the egg, all the sausage, as much of my ingredients as I can use up, and I can't wait to eat these. They I I reheat them in the air fryer for about fifteen to twenty minutes, and I keep them in the foil. They turn out to be so much better than any burrito I've ever eaten anywhere in my life. Like the shell is crisp, like, like I toasted it somewhere and nothing is soggy. I was very worried about the burrito being soggy because I would find a soggy tortilla to be the disgustingest thing in the world. Nope, no problems there. Spinach, awesome. Everything turned out awesome. And so I, I recommend these to anybody and even if you don't even think you like a breakfast burrito you're gonna love this so good and wrapping them it takes like practice a couple times but it doesn't have to be perfect and it it will hold together because as soon as you're done wrapping it you're going to wrap it in the foil and label it and put it away and it will hold its shape no worries but yep and don't overfill it. You will bust a hole in the side of it. And then that leads to a big messy problem. But, um, yeah, that's how simple that is. After wrapping your breakfast burritos, just make sure to label them with what's inside and the date that you are placing them in the freezer so that you can eat them up quickly and you don't have them for months on end in the freezer. So the next thing that I'm making 
is hard boiled eggs without the shell in my pressure cooker. I spray the inside of my container that fits inside my pressure cooker with some coconut pan spray. And then I'm just cracking about six eggs into the bowl and keep them all looking sunny. Now I put about a cup of water into my pressure cooker and put in the trivet and set in my cracked eggs. Make sure that you seal your pressure cooker and close it so it is not going to spew out all over you. Set the timer for about eight minutes. Um, this takes a little longer than actual hard boiled eggs. And don't forget to turn it on. In the meantime, while that is cooking, I am going to prepare my next meal. So right now I'm just prepping my fruit for the week, rinsing my blueberries. And I think I'm just going to eat those as a snack. I'm not going to turn them into anything this time. I also have some strawberries that we are getting ready to make into chocolate covered strawberries with some yummy, low carb, keto chocolate. These strawberries were amazing. I had to fight the kids off. They kept trying to eat them. So that's why one container is not full. But we're gonna use the pressure cooker to melt the chocolate after our eggs are finished cooking. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So just make sure, it's very important, that after you rinse your berries, you pat them dry with a paper towel because any water droplets that get into the chocolate, the melted chocolate, will cause that chocolate to turn grainy and disgusting and you have to throw all that expensive chocolate away. Okay, so our eggs are finished. They were pressure cooking for eight minutes. They rested for five minutes. I released the steam, and now I have hard-boiled eggs without shells. We're gonna set these aside to cool and use them for another recipe in today's meal prep in just a minute. Um, a little bit of condensation got on top, so I just poured that off. But we're gonna save that steamy water in the bottom and use it for our next recipe, chocolate-covered strawberries. We're gonna set um, a bowl up top and use it as a double boiler to melt our chocolate chips, which are a like low sugar, yummy chocolate chip so I can eat it with having my diabetes. Um, you can see the package information there. And here's how we're gonna do this. Okay, so we empty our package of chocolate chips into the bowl after we place it on top of the pressure cooker that has the leftover steamy water in it. And almost instantly the chips start melting. So you wanna stir continuously the whole time that you have your chips here. Now what I noticed is that the steam cooled down a little bit. So I had to turn my pressure cooker on to saute to heat the water up a little bit but it only took a second and everything was back to melting as I stirred. So you can see it transforming here from like some chunks and the dryness to this super creamy, shiny, luxurious chocolate. And this is just going to taste fabulous on the strawberries. So, what I'm doing is, even though you saw me dry off the strawberries earlier, I am not taking any chance at screwing up my expensive chocolate chips. So I'm just going to pat them dry just prior to dipping them in the melted chocolate. The chocolate does a good job at staying this consistency for all the berries that I had to dip. And I'm just patting dry, dipping, twisting, covering, 
and all of that yummy 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 dark chocolate my favorite dark chocolate and actually i just don't know why people eat milk chocolate and i definitely do not understand white chocolate dark chocolate is where it's at just like black coffee that is my favorite but anyways so continue this process until you have all your berries dipped and covered with as much chocolate as you can possibly scrounge up and then what i do afterwards is I end up putting them in the refrigerator or the freezer for a little bit just to make sure the chocolate hardens up and then everything's cold and delicious and waiting for me to eat it. Um, also at the point where you're doing the dipping, if you wanted to like add other things like sprinkles or nuts or I don't know what else, coconut, anything like that, you can do it while your chocolate's still wet but I just chose to do straight up dark chocolate and oh my word, yes, look how delicious. And they tasted that good too. So next we're jumping back over to our hard boiled egg. After it's cold, the hard boiled egg without the shells, I'm loosening up around the edges and that way I can pop it out easier. And it actually doesn't even matter how it comes out of the container because I'm going to make chopped up eggs with it so if you're lucky it'll come right out I think you could put parchment paper in the bottom and that would help with this release part if you wanted like one big egg patty but you don't need it because like I said I'm just gonna chop the crap out of this but look at it look how perfect it is like if you want to make egg salad right now, just chop that stuff up and there you go. Yep, so just take your knife and chop it this way, chop it that way, slice it, chop it. You could put a fork in there and use it. You could use a potato masher to chop it up. However you think you want to chop it up, you can chop it up. But guess what? With super ease, you have chopped eggs to add to salads, to add to soups, to make egg salad with, to add it to tuna salad, to add it to whatever you want. It's super easy, simple, done. Look at it. I love it. Enjoy. What's up next? Okay, so for my next recipe for my meal prep, I have leftover sloppy joes here that I'm going to make into wraps and put cheese on it as well. Um, you can add whatever toppings you want into these wraps that would freeze well, like onions or peppers or whatever you might want. Um, but I'm just going to do sloppy joe and cheese. So just put on your desired amount of cheese and then you're going to wrap it, roll it, put it in foil and label it and then guess what it's going in the freezer so now I have a sloppy joe burrito I guess that is waiting to be popped into the air fryer at any minute that I am hungry or someone in the house is hungry but yeah this is awesome and easy and simple and a great thing to do with your leftover sloppy joes Okay, so I picked up a chicken, a whole chicken today at the store, and I thought, I really want to make some broth, so in my pressure cooker, I'm going to cook this big bird. Um, first, we're going to wash this baby inside and out, get rid of, I don't eat those things, so I'm just pitching them, but I just give them a good bath in the sink before seasoning them and putting them into my pressure cooker I just um, put the bird in the pot and cover it with water and don't forget to clean all that nasty salmonella chicken poison out of your sink before moving forward so next I'm going to just chop some vegetables that I'm going to cook at the same time as the chicken just to flavor the stock and the meat itself. So I'm just roughly chopping one onion, a few cloves of garlic, and some celery to put in with the bird. 
and I just poke it in wherever it will fit because I don't want to go past the do not go past your line on the pressure cooker and have some crazy accident happen like I don't know what that would be but I don't want it to happen <laughs> I'm adding a few baby carrots in there for good luck and some bay leaves some salt pepper and whatever seasonings I have laying around but I'm just feeling the vibe for but it looks like a happy bird so far I think it'll turn out to be delicious and fabulous with lots of golden yellow healthy bone broth to use later so here's the bird going into the instapot and that's that fill line there you don't want to go above it put it in seal it make sure your vents closed and set the timer oh my god it looks so good i can't wait um so do pressure high pressure and for about 20 oh where am i going with this 40 minutes uh, anywhere around there because you just want it to cook i found different temperature or different uh, time frames on youtube but i did it for this and it worked really well so yet another recipe in this week's meal prep plan i can't believe i cooked all of this in one long day but I did. Sometimes I have super crazy energy and this is what happens. So anyways, I am just chopping up a um, cauliflower head and I'm going to chop it small and rinse it and strain it. And then it's going to be turned into a puree in my new piece of equipment that I just got. And I cannot wait to show it to you. Um, but let's just rinse off this cauliflower in the meantime. After you rinse your cauliflower a couple times and let it strain, just set it to the side because we need to prepare a few other ingredients before turning this cauliflower into the next recipe that we have. So while that's straining and the chicken's cooking, I am going to start frying up some bacon who doesn't love bacon I'm going to use this bacon in yet another recipe later today and look at that oh my goodness I love bacon look at all that bacon yummy bacon okay so back to my broccoli again what we're going to turn this I mean, not broccoli, it's cauliflower. What I'm going to turn this cauliflower into is a cauliflower soup, but not soup the whole way because I'm going to freeze it and it's not a good idea to freeze cream. So right now I'm just putting all my flavors together. I have the cauliflower, not broccoli, but you can substitute broccoli for this whole process, just so you know. Um, some onions, some garlic some salt some pepper and garlic seasoning and onion seasoning and stuff um and some chicken stock so i also used um white pepper and cumin in this recipe for added flavor um so up next after we're finished adding these seasonings we're going to transfer our ingredients into my new toy which is the Pampered Chef Blender. I don't remember the exact name of it. I'll look it up and link it in the description box below. Um, but this thing turns anything into soup. It makes it hot. So I'm so excited. So I'm putting my broth in and going to seal it. It's pretty heavy. Um, put it on the base. There's a bunch of prongs over there that you have to line up. But now you see how you can make it into soup look at that you just get it set and then hit the start button and then it will start slowly like working and heating at the same time so this like runs for a while and we'll just keep checking back in on this to see how it changes over the next 
few minutes while we do some other cooking. But yeah, it's pretty awesome. So now my bacon has finished cooking and I'm just going to plop it down here on a few paper towels that I have laid out on a plate. Um, and this is just going to strain the bacon and I'm going to use it for something else later. I don't know if I'm going to put it in a recipe or if I'm going to just heat it up throughout the week and eat it for breakfast at work. Um, don't forget that if you like cooking with bacon grease to save it and strain it into a glass jar for later use. And this really does make eggs and soups and everything taste fabulous. So I recommend doing it. So I'm going to make another snack that I'm going to take to work for the week where I'm just going to roll up these Italian meats and cheeses into the logs and slice them and then put them into my little container so I have it to take to work and shove meat and cheese in my face anytime I feel like I'm starving to death. Super simple, just lay it on a pile, roll it up, and then do that a few times and then slice them. See, look how cute and adorable. And here we are back to our hard boiled eggs that we made without shells in the pressure cooker. Let this cool down in the fridge for a while. And now we're going to whip it into egg salad. So we have that to eat for the week. Um, for this, I am using some mayonnaise. I just eyeball it. And if I need more, I add it. And if I added too much, oh well, I'm still gonna eat it. Um, I use some yummy Dijon mustard, salt, pepper, dill, and stir it all up and put it in a container, seal it, and enjoy it every day for like a mid-afternoon snack, if not breakfast. After you're done shaking in whatever seasonings you prefer, just start stirring and stirring and stirring and you'll notice the consistency of the egg salad turns just so delectable. Um, once it looks like this, I package it into my container for my lunches for the week or brunches or breakfasts or snacks or whatever. Um, seal it in an airtight container and do not freeze it, but eat it within about three days of making it. Um, I think this tastes fantabulous with pita chips or on bread or just by the spoonful. So, enjoy! Okay, so back over here to our Pampered Chef blender, making cauliflower soup, almost, at least the base for it. Um, this is still going and cooking and steam's coming out but I'm gonna save it and finish it another day because it's getting late. But now we're gonna go check on our chicken in the Instapot and look at that, steam's coming out. I cannot wait. The house smells totally amazing from this chicken right now. Look at that amazing chicken and broth. Oh my God. So now I'm gonna remove the chicken Put it in a pan and let it cool down and the meat is just falling off the bone tender full of flavor um, that's all going to go in the trash that was simply to flavor the stock we're not going to eat that i'm just going to scoop out all the big bits and strain out the broth so we have a nice clear broth um, then what no one knows is i was going to save that broth for something else, but didn't happen. It's turning into noodle soup. Um, my son's helping me here pick some chicken because he's getting anxious and it's been 12 hours of cooking probably today. So he is picking some of the chicken off for me. Here you can see it just pulls apart. Um, while he's doing that, I am going to begin chopping up the vegetables for our soup. And for this soup, I am just putting in basic ingredients of onions, carrots, 
and celery. Um, I had baby carrots on hand, so that's what I decided to use, which was easy to chop, um, and I didn't have to peel them or anything like that. Um, let's see. This is a super easy soup to make. You can make it from like an instant broth, or you can make it from your own homemade broth like I am doing today. Um, once you have all your vegetables chopped, you're just going to put them right into your simmering broth. Yum, look at that. This is gonna taste so flavorful. Um, slide them in there and you're just gonna cook them until they're tender. Um, after your, when you, you get your vegetables in, give it a good stir. And then we're gonna add our noodles. In this case, I am using the wide egg noodles. Um, because everyone just loves slurping them up in their soup. I can't eat those, so I just removed some broth for myself so I can have my own soup without noodles, which is fine with me. I still get all the amazing flavor and less carbohydrates. And Nathan's here taking a sampling of the soup. And he obviously approves, so I'm glad you got to see how good this was. And I have so much soup left over that I will have plenty in the fridge for this week for everyone to have a bowl of soup. Four liters is what I made after everyone had some. Or four quarts, however you want to look at it, I guess. Um, yes, delicious. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this meal prep video. And if you liked it, please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and click on the little bell so you get a reminder every time that we post a new video. Um, we're working on some more videos right now, so please stay tuned. And again, thank you so much.